Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video uh, about building a little snowflake Christmas card uh, that's going to be a web page. So we're going to use HTML and JavaScript um, to do it. Uh, I won't assume any knowledge of any of that beforehand. Um, I'm going to do it on a Raspberry Pi, but um, the beauty of writing web pages in HTML and JavaScript is you can do it on almost any computer because uh, almost all computers have got web browsers and almost all computers have got text editors. So the web browser that we're going to use is called Midori. Um, but you can use Firefox or um, uh, or Internet Explorer or Chrome or Safari or anything else you like. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my blog page and download um, this uh, snowflake picture. Uh, if you want to, you can draw your own snowflake picture, but if you want to use my snowflake picture, go to the uh, blog page that will be linked in the YouTube notes, and then you can find a link here, this snowflake.svg file, and download it. So in a second we're going to download it. First of all we're going to create a directory to do all our stuff in. So we're going to make uh, a directory. I'm going to make it in my home directory. So I'm going to Create a new folder, and I'm going to call it Snowflakes. I'm going to call it Snowflakes JavaScript because I've already made a video about how to make um, a Snowflake Christmas card in Scratch. If you want to watch that, uh, check out my video page. Um, it's going to be that's uh, this one's going to be quite a lot more difficult than that one, um, but at the end of it, you'll have a web page that you can put somewhere on the internet if you've got access to. Um, the ability to upload to uh, somewhere and that means it'll be much easier for people to have a look at what you've made um, it'll be like a proper website uh, <clears throat> and also JavaScript is a programming language that um, people use for their job I don't think anyone uses Scratch um, for their job except possibly if their job is to teach people how to um, uh, use Scratch Anyway, I've made a directory called Snowflakes JavaScript, so now I'm going to go back to my blog page. Um, I'm going to right click on snowflake.svg and do save as. In some browsers that might say save link as or something like that. So I'm going to save that SVG file and I'm going to put it in the Snowflakes JavaScript folder that I just made. I'll click save. So that picture um, that snowflake.svg snowflake is a picture of a snowflake. It's 50 pixels by 50 pixels in size. Uh, it can be an SVG or it could be a PNG uh, or possibly something else as well. Um, I decided to make it an SVG because it, um, when you make it uh, different sizes it looks nicer. Um, I used the program Inkscape to draw it. Um, I'm sure if you look on YouTube you'll find lots of videos showing you how to use Inkscape. Um, uh, so you could try using Inkscape too, um, or you're welcome to download this file and use it for your Christmas card. So, now that we've downloaded that file, what we're going to need is a text editor, and on the Raspberry Pi, the one that I like to use is Leafpad. So we're going to start Leafpad, and all we're going to do is type into Leafpad, and that, that's going to make a web page that, that we show in our browser. I'll show you how it works. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Should do it. Okay, so the, before we do anything else, we have to do some quite tricky typing that you have to get exactly right. You don't have to know what it means. In fact, to be honest, I've got a pretty limited understanding of what it means myself. But you have to type bracket exclamation mark dot type HTML, and you also around everything you have to type html and then slash html make sure you get all this stuff exactly right if stuff starts going wrong in your christmas card uh, make sure you try it out nice and early on um, if it goes wrong uh, try downloading i'll put my my version up on that blog post as well try downloading mine and comparing yours against mine and um, see wh whether there's, there's just something really subtly different these brackets are diagonal brackets, so that's like a, a greater than sign or a less than sign, if that makes any sense. Um, and when you're making an HTML page, everything always goes in, inside this HTML 
So this means start doing HTML, and this slash here means finish doing HTML. So the next bit we're going to do is we're going to make a section called head. So again, you start the head section by saying bracket head bracket, and you close it with this bracket slash head bracket. So head just means um, all the stuff that's not the um, not the writing and stuff on your page, but extra stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is a title, and this is a title that appears um, uh, uh, on the on the name of the tab or at the top of your browser window. Um, so it's not something inside the page; it's something at the top. So I'm going to call it Merry Christmas, and I think at that point. I'll do one more thing. I'll do one more thing first. I'm going to make a body section. So we've done the head, um, and the head's got the title inside it. And then we're going to make a body section. So here's the beginning of the body, and then this slash for the end of the body. Whoops, I did it. That slash for the end of the body. Um, so uh, now that that's done, I'm going to save it. So I'm going to do file, save as. I'm going to go into my Snowflake JavaScript folder that I made before, and I'm going to call this JavaScript, sorry, snowflakes.html. It's very important that the end of the name is HTML. Um, and the beginning of it can be anything you like, but I'm calling it snowflakes.html. I click save, and that saved it. So what I can do now is I can go into my web browser, and somewhere in your browser you'll have a way of bringing up a menu and hopefully one of the options you'll have in there will be open or open file or something like that if not I'll show you another way of doing this which is a bit trickier um, just trying to get my window in the right place so click open um, and you can see actually my file is here in the recently used list but I'll show you how I get to it so I go to my home directory and I find Snowflakes JavaScript and then snowflakes.html. So choose that HTML file and you'll see there's a completely empty page. So what we've written so far in our text editor, all we've told it is the title of the page is Merry Christmas. And if you look carefully, you can see at the top of the window, it's using that title to give the window a name. Uh, and if you... Uh, if you couldn't find the open file button in your browser, this is showing you there's another way of doing it. At the top of your browser window, you'll have this thing called the address bar, which will normally say HTTP something something something. If you change that to say file colon slash slash slash, and then you, get, you type in the whole path on your file system of where this file is, you can see at the end it's called snowflakes.html, which is what we called it. That's another way, if you can manage to type that whole path without making any mistakes, uh, that's another way you can make this page appear in the browser. If you type something wrong here, let's just put in some wrong stuff, then it's going to say, look, I couldn't find the page. And the, the, Your message might look a bit different from that, but um, it's going to complain. But if you get it right, we'll see our blank page and it'll say Merry Christmas at the top, or there might be a tab here that says Merry Christmas for you. So that's how to get um, or make a web page and have it appear in the browser. But let's put something in it, shall we? Well, let's start off by putting a message actually in the window. This is Merry Christmas. Like this. Merry Christmas. So this P stands, P stands for paragraph. We're making a new paragraph. We open it here and then we close it here with a slash P. So I'm going to save it. Go back to here, and you can see here there's a refresh button in your browser. It should be reload or refresh somewhere uh, near that address bar. If you click it, it'll reload, and you can see it still says Merry Christmas at the top, but now that P that we put in means that there's a Merry Christmas written there as well. So I think the next thing we should do is make that Merry Christmas a bit bigger uh, and look a bit nicer, and also let's make a background color. So the way we do that is inside our head section, um, before the end of the head, we're going to make a section called style. And this is where we put in information about um, uh, different colors and fonts and things like that that are going to appear on your web page. We've only got one bit of writing in this web page. But if you have more, you'll have more bits in here. So first thing is, well, let's make the background. Let's do the background color first. So in fact, no, let's do it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to 
uh, change how this body thing looks. So we in the style section we type body and then we need a um, curly bracket. So this is a different type of bracket. These are diagonal brackets. This is a curly bracket which will probably be near your P key on your keyboard. And what we're going to do uh, is we're going to change the background colour first. So what we do to do that is we say background colour. No, notice it's the American spelling. I'm pretty sure you have to do the American spelling. Oh, I may not be right. Um, some of these names can actually be the British spelling as well, but I tend to stick to the American spelling for whenever I'm writing code because so much code needs it. So we're going to set the background colour to blue. Hopefully that would be a nice wintry colour. We're also going to change the, the colour of the writing. So the way you do that is just colour and then colon and then red. So notice it's the it's the name of something and then the, the thing you want, want it to be and then you have to have a semicolon and you have to have this colon in between them. <coughs> um, you can't get any of this stuff wrong. It'll all go wrong if you get it wrong. So you've got to be really careful to start exactly the right stuff. We'll also make it a nice font. So let's make it Ubuntu font. I don't know whether we've got that on the Raspberry Pi or not. It's a nice font. And if you can't find the Ubuntu font, we'll have a font called Sans Serif. Make sure there's a dash in there. Uh, we're going to make it nice and big. So I'm going to say font size 100 pixels high. Normally you wouldn't use um, pixel font sizes, but everything on this web page is going to be pixels. So don't worry too much about that. And I'm also going to say, um, write your text, uh, make the text appear in the middle of the screen instead of on the left like it was. You can see at the moment it's over to the left. We're going to say put it in the center. And again, I'm sorry, but you have to spell center in the American way. Or in fact, possibly in this section, you don't have to. But I always think it's safer to do so. Okay, so I've, I've saved it again. Now, a lot of things are going to change when we refresh our page. Let's go back in and, and reload it. And you see it's gone completely blue. And it says Merry Christmas in big red uh, writing that's in the middle of the screen. So, so far, everything we've done has worked out. You'll probably see me make a few mistakes as we continue. But so far, everything's working. Okay. So that's... Um, that's all the styling that we want to do. Now what we need to do is write some script, which basically means some program uh, that does the real work of making snowflakes appear. Before we do that, I just want to show you, if I can, this snowflake picture. It's slightly confusing. Basically, it's it's white on a transparent background. So when you make your SVG, your PNG, if you don't download mine, try and make it uh, a white drawing on a transparent background. But I've found that's quite difficult to do in quite a lot of programs. What I had to do in Inkscape was change the background colour to be something different, draw it all in white, and then get rid of the background colour at the last minute. Um, you might find the same thing. Um, it's similar in, in the GIMP, that um, the background colour is almost white. You can probably change it in the GIMP. Anyway, notice that our HTML file and our Snowflake file are next to each other, and that we're, that's important. So in our HTML file, we're going to talk about the SVG file or the image file uh, by giving its name. If it's not in the same directory, we'd have to do more work. So make sure they're in the same directory, the same folder. Okay, so let's write some code. <clears throat> uh, so where we write code is inside a script tag. And we had a style tag for making things look different. And now we have a script tag for doing um, writing all our program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to check that we've got anything working at all. So the way I'm going to do that is like this. I'm going to say window.onload equals load. So basically what we're saying here is when you've finished uh, loading everything, when you're ready, call this function. There's this function called load. Now we haven't written the, the function called load yet, so let's write it. So now we've written a function called load. Remember, you know, everything has to be spelt exactly like this. So the word function has to be spelt like this, and then you need a space, and you can call it load. Then bracket bracket. That just means I'm making a function. Function is just a little bit of code. And then we need an open curly bracket and close bracket curly bracket to say um, this is the start of the function and this is the end of the function. And before we do something proper, I'm just going to get you to do this. Just type in. 
inside that load function just type in alert1 so what we're saying here is when you're ready run this function and inside this function which is so that that is referring to that and then inside there what we're saying is alert1 which basically means pop up a window saying 1 so save it go back to the browser and reload if we're lucky it will pop up and say 1 to us yeah there it is it popped up at the top that's a bit different from my browser I did it earlier um, but it's telling us that one it says JavaScript it's just telling us who said one or the JavaScript program said one all right so we can close that so that worked and what that means is that we if you got if you got that one to pop up without an error happening uh, you're doing pretty well if um, if the one didn't pop up try going into your browser and pressing F12 um, on the keyboard and or I'll uh, go to the console if you can find the options for it um, and then if you click on the word console after you've pressed F12 it should show you any errors or things that went wrong so if for example I spelt this wrong I saved it and I did a reload it won't, it won't show me a 1, something's gone wrong Let's just wait for it to come back. Yeah, okay, so it's come back. If I press F12 in this browser, maybe nothing will happen. A lot of browsers, if you press F12, you can see um, you can see what went wrong. Let's see whether we can do it here by saying inspect page. Yeah, that's it. So, if I go to audits maybe in here no scripts maybe somewhere I'm sure I'm gonna get uh, oh yeah oh here I am I can see a little um, X here if I click on that it's gonna show me reference error I can't find the variable alert so basically what that's telling me is I don't know what this word alert means um, you must have misspelled something it tells me what line on line 19 of my file. Um, so in a lot of browsers, if you press F12, you should see a message like this. Uh, in Midori, it's a bit different. So if I close that again, and I change, I fix the problem that I deliberately put in. So now it says alert one again, and I save it. When I go back into Midori and refresh, it will say one to me again. There we are. Right, so that proves that uh, I've got the basic stuff working, that I can uh, wait until we're ready and then run a function, and this function runs. That's all I wanted to check there. So, uh, now we've checked that we've got something running, let's uh, let's make some snowflakes. Um, let's start off by just making a few. So, we're going to make a variable called i, and we're going to use that to loop. Which basically means do something a lot of times. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do it 10 times, so I'm just I'm going to explain this to you in a second. So we've got a variable called i, so this line just says make me a variable called i, which is basically just a thing that holds on to a number. It can hold on to other things, but for us at the moment it's holding on to a number. And then we have 4, which basically means do something lots of times. Um, what we're going to say is start off with i equal to 1, and then we need this semicolon here, and then say when i gets up to 10 stop that's what that means so you keep going while i is less than 10 and then plus plus i just means add 1 to i so i starts off as 0 it gets bigger by 1 each time we we run this code and then when it gets up to 10 we stop so we haven't given it any code to run yet using i so let's do that now what we're going to do is we're going to call another function all we're going to do is call another function called create flake And let's write that function. So here we go. Let's write it up here. And what create flake is going to do is make a snowflake appear on the screen. So let me find my code for that. So we're going to make another variable called flake. And there's a bit that you're basically going to have to copy from me. So document.create element. And because a snowflake is a picture, um, we're making an IMG element, which is an image element. And that, that image is going to be the snowflake picture. 
The way we do that is we say, we tell it, we have to tell it where the picture is that we want to show. So the word for that, the phrase it uses is SRC, which means the source for the image is going to be called snowflake. SVG, and if yours was called something different, like if you made yours a, a PNG file or a GIF file or something else, then make sure you get this name right. <coughs> um, and uh, uh, this is why they have to be in the same folder, the same directory as each other, because uh, uh, if not, I'd have to give the folder location here um, instead of just the name there. They, uh, because they're in the same directory, the name's enough for it to find it. Okay, we also need to set up some other stuff about the snowflake. Well, a lot of the stuff that we need to set is, is part of the style. So we're going to type flake, flake.style a lot of times. The first thing we need to say about it is that instead of it's, it just hanging around um, kind of near where you put it, we want it to hang around exactly where we tell it to go. So we're going to say it's position, the style style.position is, is absolute, so that means um, it goes exactly where we put it um, and doesn't just float around uh, in a nice way. So in most web pages you actually want things to kind of float around so that when you resize the window uh, they end up lined up in the right place. Uh, but for what we're doing, we're not doing a normal web page, we're going to make pictures appear and we want them to appear exactly where we tell them to. So. Um, we're going to um, we're going to use absolute positioning. Um, something else we need to do is we're going to make it hidden to start off with. So the way you do that is you say flake.star.visibility. Make sure you spell it right. Equals hidden. Um, and also we're going to make it. Um, we don't want it to come up in front of our happy Christmas message. So we're just going to say flake.star.z equals minus one. So basically that just says go behind the other stuff. Once we've done that we can um, basically tell it we've created it we haven't put it in yet. So this just says put it into the page. So we just do a pen child and that means put this snowflake onto the page. So it's hidden, so we won't see it. So it's going to be hidden, but for now, let's not make it hidden. Let's make it visible, just so we can check that this works. So file save. Oh, I did a control. I, I, I obsessively press control S. Anyway, you do file save. I've already done it. Um, and then go back to your browser. By the way, if you forget to do file save, your browser will show no difference because it doesn't, it can't see any changes to what you've done. So if you refresh the page and it looks exactly like it did before, make sure you check whether you've saved. So reload the page and look, a snowflake has appeared. Um, so things are moving on. Right, let's make it hidden again. Because our next job is to make it only appear at the right time. So what we're going to do next is we are going to yeah what we're going to do is we're going to remember all these snowflakes that we're making and hold on to them so that we can do stuff with them later so what we're going to do is make a list of stuff that, well, that we're going to, that's going to hold on to all our snowflakes so we're making a variable this is outside of any function so this is going to be a variable that all the functions can see we're going to call it snowflakes. So it's a variable called snowflakes. And what we're saying is it starts off being bracket bracket, which means empty list. So notice this is a yet another type of bracket. This is a square bracket. So this is an empty list. And then later in a second, we're going to um, fill it up with stuff. So what we're going to do is every time we create a flake, we're going to send it back from this function. So this function makes this variable and does some stuff with it, then it's going to send it back. So return flake basically means anyone who calls this function gets to use this flake later. So the person who's calling this function is here. They call that, that's how you call that function. So instead of us just calling the function and not doing anything, what we want to do is get the thing that comes back from there and put it into our list. So we're going to say snowflakes dot push. Flake. And what that means is take the thing that comes back from create flake and send it to this push 
function and this push function basically just puts it in the list so instead of the list just being an empty list like it starts off as it will have some stuff in it so now we've got these snowflakes stored somewhere we can do something with them what we're going to do is um, uh, make them appear uh, at random in random places and at random times so how do we do that well, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the one of the most magic functions in JavaScript, which is set interval. And we're going to say basically ten times a second uh, call this function, which we haven't written yet. So basically, this is the number of milliseconds in between calling the function. So we've said a hundred milliseconds, so that means ten times a second. Call this function animate. Uh, so now we have to write the function animate, otherwise it isn't going to work. And this function is going to do all the clever stuff of making snowflakes appear and disappear. So notice again, I have to write the word function exactly like that. This is the name of the function, and the way you say what, how a function works is you say function, then its name, bracket, bracket, and then you curly brackets around the, the middle of it. And you know it's going to get called by this set interval thing. So what should we do first? Well, first of all, let's make them appear. So we're going to have a loop, so we'll have another um, variable called i and we're going to have another variable called flake because we're going to loop through all the snowflakes and do something with them. So here's our loop. We're going to set i to be 0 at the beginning and then i is going to carry on until we've got no more snowflakes. So the way we do this is we say i stops when you get to snowflakes.length. That's basically the number of things in this snowflakes thing that we've made. Uh, and we make i bigger once every time around the loop. So now every time we get into this curly bracket, i is going to be a bit bigger, and that means we can get the snowflake out of the list like this. So basically, the, putting a bracket with the i like this means get the get the i one out of the list, and the i starts off at zero. So the first time around the loop, we'll get the first one out of the list, and the second time around the loop, we'll get the second one out of the list. And when we get them out, we put them into flake. So flake is now going to be each snowflake one by one. Every time around the loop, flake is going to be a different snowflake. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if you can't currently see this snowflake, then maybe make it visible. So what we're going to say is if uh, flake.style.visibility equals hidden. So notice here we've got three equal signs here. That's to say uh, if our, our visibility is set to hidden. So up here we just have one equal which means set it to hidden. So visibility equals hidden means set visibility to be hidden. Up here we're saying if visibility is hidden, so obviously it will be, just after we've set it, but later on it might have changed. So if this snowflake is not visible at the moment, then maybe we're going to uh, make it visible. So what we're going to do is, we don't want to do this every, uh, 10 times a second, or they'll all immediately become visible. What we're going to do is we're going to ask for a random number. And uh, this function math.random gives us back a random number that's somewhere between 0 and 1. So if I say this, what I'm saying is sometimes, but not very often, one time out of every 100 in fact, um, do the thing inside the loop. Otherwise do absolutely nothing. And the thing inside the loop that we want to do is we're going to call another function. basically if it's invisible and if something quite rare happens call this function otherwise do nothing right we've got to make this function happen. So, don't worry in a second we'll see what's, what's actually happening so what we did here when we called this function was we passed in this argument which is this flake thing that we found so that's the different snowflake every time around the loop and we're saying take this flake in and do something with it. What we want to do with it um, is make it visible. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to do flake dot 
all the visibility becomes visible. Um, and I think for now that's all we'll do. We'll just check that that works. So, do a file save. Refresh your page and you should see the snowflake starts off invisible and then after a random amount of time it appears. So that was very quick, that's quite quickly happened quite quickly. After a random amount of time snowflake appears. Can you see that happening? Yeah. Okay. So so far it's all working. So we don't just want to make it visible in that one place, we'd quite like it to appear um, in a random place on the screen and possibly a random size, wouldn't we? Okay. So, let's um, work out what size we want it to be. Now my image I said at the beginning, my SVG uh, was 50 pixels by 50 pixels. If yours is different, you're going to have to change this stuff a little bit. So what I've decided to do is set, set its size on the screen to be somewhere between 10 and 90 uh, pixels. Um, <coughs> um, if your um, Snowflake was a different size, size from mine, you might need to adjust that. So the way I'm doing that is I'm making a variable called s and I'm setting it to be equal to math.round which basically just means it's a whole number and not a fraction. And then I'm doing 10 plus 90 times math.random Um, and semicolon at the end. So basically, what we're saying here is no, no, I want 80. Points. So, what we're saying is take a random number between 0 and 1 and make it uh, up to somewhere between 0 and 80 and then add 10 on. So, that means it should be somewhere between 10 and 90. So, we want our size to be between 10 and 90. So, now we've got this S number, which is the size we want. And then we can do Set the size like this: float dot star dot width or float dot star dot height. Line those up. So that size is the size in pixels. And we're also going to do. Um, we're going to put it at a random place on the screen. So we're going to make another function called pause, which takes in s and it takes in the size of the window. So the size of the window is, is window dot inner height. That's just something you have to know if you're using JavaScript. You have to do this plus px at the end. So don't worry about the plus px's too much. Basically, what we're telling all this stuff in the style part of the flag, we have to tell it what units we're using. And at the moment, we're using pixels, so we have to add a px at the end. So we've done flag dot style dot top. Let's do flag dot style dot left as well. So that's telling it the top the top of this snowflake should be at this position, the left hand side of the snowflake should be at this position, and these are the width and the height. So we're going to use our pause function which we haven't written yet. We're passing in uh, the size of the window. So we, uh, this is the way in JavaScript to find out what size the window you're currently in. We've got window dot inner height, window dot inner width, and we basically want to choose a random position somewhere inside this this height. So we've written a little function. I'm going to write a little function called pause. Couldn't think of a name for it. And that takes in two arguments. You've seen that we've been passing in this s, and we've been passing in the height of the window. We're going to use those to decide a random place on the screen. And basically, take away half of the size from the answer, and then add on um, basically a random number that's scaled by the screen size. So feel free to think through what this means in your own time. Or feel free not to think it through and just copy what I've written. I'm going to break this onto a couple of lines not be easy to read. I'll check my I've got right the right number of brackets. Semicolon at the end, don't forget your semicolons or you get more errors appearing in that console. 
So basically, you, um, <clears throat> take away half the size of the thing so that we're choosing a random position that makes sense. Um, and then uh, scale the screen size to uh, between a tenth of it and um, nine tenths of it. And then send back the answer. And the answer comes back to give us the top and the left. So if we save this, we can go back and see. And hopefully our snowflakes will appear at random places and random sizes. But something is not working. I must have made a bug. Let's have a quick look. Spec page. I did warn you, didn't I? I was likely to mess it up. 14 errors. It's terrible. Left side of assignment is not a reference at line 42. So let's have a look at line 42 in here. Ah, look. I've got an equal sign where I meant to type a plus. Why didn't you tell me? Right, save that. And let's go back. Close that inspect page. Refresh it and see whether it works. Yes! So look, all of our snowflakes are appearing. Although weirdly, they're all appearing over to the left of the screen, so I must have another bug. Aha! I did another typo right next to the other one. Instead of PX, I typed PS. Okay, let's fix it now. So you might well see very weird stuff like this. You're going to get very frustrated with it. Oh, I know I do whenever I'm programming. Um, I get very frustrated, but keep trying and look at the line number that appears in the error message. And then often the error message itself is pretty confusing or scary, but if, it, if you look at the line number and then check that line of your program or the line before or the line after, often you'll find uh, there's something obvious that you've done wrong. There's nothing to do with the error message. Okay, so here you go. Uh, you've got snowflakes appearing, so we're we're quite close to having quite a nice Christmas card already. A couple more things I'd like to do to make it just a tiny bit nicer. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like, in fact, the only thing I'd like to do now is make it fade away and disappear, um, and then possibly come back later. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the flake right so we've made it visible but what we also want to do is make it not transparent so at the moment none of these are transparent but in a second we're going to make them transparent so when we make a snowflake appear we've got to make sure we make it not transparent so we set its opacity to one and we're also going to stick a little timer inside the flake. So basically this flake variable has a lot of um, stuff inside it like style that's already defined and we're just going to make a new thing inside it called timer and the way you do that in JavaScript you just say flake.timer equals something and it appears. So now there's a thing called timer that lives inside flake and uh, we're going to use that timer to know when it should disappear. So what we're going to do is um, at the moment we, we we're looping through all the snowflakes in the animate function. We loop through all of them, and then if they're invisible, we do something, but if they're not, we don't do anything. So now we are going to do something. What we're going to do, oops. what we're going to do is call another function. And we're going to call that fade flake. And we're going to put that here. We're going to make this new function fade flake, and it takes in whoops, it takes in as an argument, obviously, the flake that we're actually dealing with at the moment. Put it in there. So this is the place where we're passing it in because we made it here, and this is the place that where we're receiving it and then doing something with it. So. What we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, we're going to make the, the timer go down by one. So this is the way we do that. You just put a minus minus there, just like, a bit like the plus plus here. In fact, we could put it before, let's put it before just to be consistent. Make the timer one smaller. 
Uh, and then if you get, if you, if you finished, if your time has got down to zero, then we're going to make you disappear again. Basically, it lasts for a hundred ticks of the clock. So every time we come in here, we make the timer a bit smaller. If it gets down to zero, we set your visibility to hidden. So let's try that. And hopefully our snowflakes will start disappearing after a few seconds. Actually, after 10 seconds, because the timer should be firing um, 10 times a second, and we gave it a hundred. So there you can see some snowflakes disappearing. Yay, it works. Okay, so we're nearly there. Now, instead of just disappearing straight off, I'd like them to fade out a bit. So what I want to say is, if um, if the timer gets down to zero, you, do, you actually properly disappear. But if you're near zero, I want you to fade out a bit. So the way we can do that is like this. If you're near to zero, so less than 20, set your opacity to start you fading out. So what we're going to do is remember we set opacity to one at the top that means completely visible so we need a number less than one to be a bit less than a bit less visible. So we're going to use our timer which we know is, is 20 or less and we're going to do divide it by 20 so now we know it's less than one and as your timer counts down closer to zero we'll get more invisible because um, 1 divided by 20 is a small number, for example. So save it, and I think this is the last thing I'm going to do. So I'll notice, we can see our snowflakes appearing, and then after a few seconds, they should start fading out, if we're lucky. There they go. Now the, I guess the last thing to try is to increase the number of snowflakes that we've got. I wonder whether you can remember how to do that. So I'm a bit nervous um, of exactly how many snowflakes you can have on a Raspberry Pi, and it still looks nice. So let's make the number a bit bigger, but not too big, or my Raspberry Pi might fall over. Let's let's try a hundred of them. On my other computer, I had five hundred, and it all worked fine. It looked very nice. Let's see how it looks with one hundred. Is the Raspberry Pi going to be able to handle it? Seems okay. Seems pretty good actually. Hopefully they'll start fading out soon. I think it might be struggling somewhat. Oh no, there you go. Okay, they're fading out. Okay. So even on the Raspberry Pi, which is a very not very powerful computer, we can still have a, a quite an attractive Christmas card with a hundred snowflakes on it. So if you want, so this you're basically finished. If you you've done this, you've got two files. You've got your snowflakes.html file and you've got your snowflake.svg or whatever it's called. If you want those to be, um, if you want to show someone them on the computer as it is now, then you can do that. You just show them this web page in, in the browser, just like the same way we've been using it. If you want to um, send it to someone else so that they can see it, you need to find somewhere on the internet that you can put it. So you might your your internet service provider might give you a bit of space, or you might um, have a web page or somewhere that you can put it. Um, I can't really give you the details of that, but if you can work out somewhere where you can put those two files on the internet and then go to that place in your web browser, um, you should see uh, your Christmas card. And if you then send someone a link so they can go to the same page by just copying the address from the top here, if you've got that somewhere on the internet, it will say something like HTTP on the top there, um, or it might not say anything at all. But if you've got, the, if you've got a position on the internet, where, where this is saved, copy that link from the address bar up there and send an email to someone or, or some other message with that URL in it and uh, um, they'll be able to see the, the card that you made. So that's the way you can send it to someone which is probably possibly slightly easier than the scratch version we did before. I um, hope you enjoyed making the card. Um, uh, definitely look at it on a different web browser, not just the Raspberry Pi one, because the um, Raspberry Pi one goes quite slowly, and 
um, it's a bit smoother on another one. Try changing some of the numbers, like try changing the number of snowflakes. Maybe you can have a lot more snowflakes on there. Um, and maybe think about doing some other things, like making them move around instead of staying in the same place, or having more than one snowflake picture. Uh, do send me um, what you've done. I'd be really interested to see uh, if anyone makes a card like this. Uh, that would be very exciting for me. So do send me, uh, send me what you've done. And I'll see you next time.